set up a file to do a, an engraving using the rotary jig, so any type of cup or cylindrical object. I made a regular file. I made this artboard by accident, let me delete that. So I made a regular file. I have to set my artboard, so I hit edit artboard. I have to keep my width to 32. This is really important. So I'm leaving the width the whole length of the machine, and I'm changing my height to the circumference of the cup I'm engraving. So you're going to have to measure the diameter of the cup, and then you can go online and use a circumference calculator to figure out the circumference. Remember the radius, which is what you need in the circumference calculation, the radius is half the diameter. For the cups that we're doing, I know that about nine inches is good. If you bring in your own cup or water bottle or something like that, it might be different. And I can help you do this. So I set up my workspace. Now one of the weird things about the cups is that this length represents the whole bed. We're putting in a jig a rotary jig to turn this thing, which takes up some of the space. So we need to figure out where is the cup actually going to be in this blank space. To do that, I go to the laser engraver and I have it move to certain points with the lid open so I see that LED light and then I can figure out where I need to design in the space. So I would turn on the rulers and I have all these measurements here. And if you double click, you have a margin. So what I do when I'm doing things for the first time is move these things to show the maximum height I want and the minimum, which I do just by moving the laser and figuring out where do I want the top of the glass to be and where do I want the bottom of my engraving space on the glass being. Now, I have done this more than once before, so I already know that I want where I want my margins to be. So I'm just going to copy the coordinates from another program that I have. The cool thing about this is this is basically your template. So now if you, you can keep on making glasses and you'll never have to do this again once you figure out correctly the first time. So this is my maximum high point and then this second line is going to be my low point. So if you are actually working with the glasses that we have, this is the setup for the short glasses, 26, or I'm sorry, 27.6 for the lowest point, and then for the highest point, 30.1. On Google Classroom, I'll put the dimensions for the larger glasses to the min and max, so you have that and you don't have to figure it out on your own. So now I'm zooming in, so I'm in this work area. So I want all my pictures and stuff to be in between this space. This is what I have determined to be a good space to be in. When you're working with glass, you really need black and no fill. So you do not want white. If you have white in your image, it's going to engrave it and it's not going to look good. To make sure there's no white, you can drag the logos over here and you see it's just black and then nothing. Remember from the previous activity, white is a color. So if you will get an image, you can start really editing it by ungrouping it and then clicking on the certain parts and changing the fill. These images have already been edited and they're all set ready to go. So I'm going to just 
copy and paste this stuff. So I have my good images. They're a little large, and I have to resize them. And I, excuse me. So I'm going to show you a couple of different scenarios. One scenario is you do a, a, a single-sided glass. If you're doing a one-sided glass, you could put this stuff anywhere especially if it doesn't have a handle. You just put this anywhere, hit print, and you're ready to go. I really want you guys to do double-sided glasses because number one, they look much nicer, and then you have to do a little bit more math and it's more complicated. So if I was doing a double-sided glass, I had two logos. in this text. I would make it look good. And now I need to set my spacing. So if you have a double sided glass, you want this center line to be right in front of this center line on the cup. Otherwise, it's going to look funny. So what's important is that th this spacing here equals this spacing plus this spacing. You could see just by looking at it, you know that's wrong. So how do you figure that out? Well, we already know our circumference because we calculated that earlier. Our circumference is about 9. If you wanted to check it, you could go back here and you see it's 9. So I take that circumference 9, and if I click here, I could see that this is 1.73 long, about. So I take 9 and I subtract 1.73. Then I find out how long this one is. It's 1. Let's say 1.78. And I'm getting that the total when you subtract those things is 5.49. So I take that total, 5.49, and divide by 4. And I get 1.372. So I take this and I make this height 1.372. And you're almost going to use this as a spacer basically like you did in the coaster project on VCarve where I'm going to put this to the end. And I'm going to have this so it's right, right next to it. this to the end have this so it's right on it and now you can just eyeball it and see that the spacing looks like it's equal to the spacing plus the spacing which is what we want now that your files all set up the spacing is correct the next part of this video will show you how to print it.